So I'm Prabhas. The principles of growth is my presentation today. And the first question I was asked was why growth and to really understand why I chose this topic and why it's a topic I'm very passionate about. It really stems from kind of my experience at UConn. So this is a lot on the slide. I'll break it down. But coming into UConn, my first philosophy was that at the end of my four years, I think that I thought that growth would matter over grades. So growth over grades was my philosophy. Then I met with my academic advisor and my philosophy was revised to growth and grades. Um, but one of the things that really mattered to me was just throwing myself out there and seeing what I enjoyed. So during my freshman year, um, I got to work uh, at a kind of small uh, pre-med startup called Motivate MD. Um, during my sophomore year, I was a marketing intern for UConn Extension, so one of the agricultural programs at UConn. During that sophomore year, I joined the UConn Consulting Group, which is a student-run group that mimics the kind of the day-to-day -day of a, a strategy consulting firm. So we work on projects for real clients uh, every semester. My junior year, I did an internship in digital marketing at the Hartford, and was also continuing my work through UCG. And then senior year, just recently, I joined our student-run venture capital firm, Hillside Ventures, um, became the vice president of the UConn Consulting Group. And now, like Zoe mentioned, in a couple of months, I'll be starting at ServiceNow in uh, go-to-market strategies. I threw this slide just to uh, kind of highlight that my, my passion for growth came through many different avenues. When I was doing digital marketing for those three different roles, it's about growing brand awareness. It was about growing digital channels. It was making sure that we were monitoring our growth. Through consulting and my novice experience, it was about giving nonprofits and startups valuable growth strategies. Through venture investing, one of the things that we look at is high potential growth companies and evaluating that. And now post-grad, thinking about product growth and how I want to be executing that in a professional role. So my love for growth really just came from throwing myself out there. And I realized that through all of these random different experiences came that passion for trying to solve problems and growing solutions. So jumping in to what I believe are the principles of growth. To come up with these principles, I did a lot of research on the companies and the products that I use on a day-to-day -day basis, ones that I think our students especially resonate with. And I tried to identify those underlying principles that seem to be very consistent, no matter the industry, no matter the company. So we'll be presenting a couple of case studies based off of these principles. The first one really is building on passion. Um, one of my favorite quotes from Steve Jobs is that, if you're not passionate from the start, you're never going to stick it out. And I think passion is really one of those things when you talk to a founder about, you know, how are you growing your company? Passion might not be the word that's underlined there. It might be marketing, it might be sales, it might be all of the business buzzwords that we like to throw to show that we're thinking about growth. But underlying all of that comes this little bit of passion. And passion to stick it out, passion to, you know, put yourself out there and bring your product to life. So an interesting case study um, on passion and building on it. Um, the early days of Instagram. So right now, Instagram has 1.2 billion monthly users. It's the second most downloaded app on the App Store. It's the seventh most visited website in the world. But the early days of Instagram did not look like the Instagram that we have today. The app actually started as a company named Bourbon, which was founded by Kevin Sinstrom's love for sharing whiskey and bourbon that he was drinking a lot of at the time, apparently. Um, but his idea came from the passion that he loved to share drink recommendations to his friends, but rather than sending them an email or giving them a call, he wanted to create a platform where he could just share things that he was doing and the drinks that he was drinking. Um, Bourbon was really built on that passion, but to start growing this company, to start scaling and getting venture dollars, one of the biggest pieces of feedback he got was, this is your passion, you're passionate about bourbon and whiskey, but what is the passion that people are gonna identify with with your app? So what Kevin and his founding team did is they stripped down all of the features of bourbon and just thought about where the passion actually lies. It's not so much about the drink or the product itself, but it was the passion that he found his friends engaging in from just sharing their photos. So they stripped down bourbon to that passion of sharing your photos with your friends and your community, and they pivoted to Instagram where they removed the, the drinking aspect, although it probably still exists in some parts of the, the app, um, and they wanted to just build on that passion for photo sharing. So one of the most commonly used apps, um, one of the biggest websites that we use today, really came from that passion, from one founder from sharing the passion of drinking to, the, to understanding that there was a passion bigger than that that all of us users enjoy, the passion of sharing the content that we create. 
Moving on to principle number two, um, and that's progress over perfection. Winston Churchill, one of his famous quotes, um, is that perfection is the enemy of progress. And in the growth game, one of the interesting things about perfection and progress is that we all want to perfect our product. We all want to pr perfect the service or the things that we are providing, but we can't let that get in the way of making day-to-day -day progress. Overnight success is very unfeasible. And for me, looking at some of the companies that research, it really boiled down to making small, small progress in the sake of perfecting the idea. So two case studies here, Airbnb. When Airbnb was creating their, their, their air bed and breakfast, that's Airbnb, when they're trying to create their product and trying to figure out how they could grow this company, one of the early questions that they had to ask themselves was, how are we gonna perfect this brand new rental market? There's hotels, they've seemed to perfect the game, but how do we perfect our own product? So they started with this tiny bit of progress. They wanted to just figure out if people would use their service. So whenever there was a um, political convention in their hometown of Philly, they would just rent out their bedroom on Facebook or Twitter and they'd say, hey, if you want a place to crash that's cheaper than a hotel, you can sleep on our floor in our room. And that was how they found progress. It didn't seem like they were perfecting their product by just offering a little living room <laughs> carpet space to some random strangers. But by doing that, they found some results. They found people that were interested in this type of service and that helped them progress to what ultimately became the dominant force in this type of market. So again, that concept of trying to perfect a brand new market was overwhelming for them. So they figured out the best way to figure out if we can do this, if we can perfect this market, is just to start and make a little bit of progress. Another uh, favorite story of mine with this progress over perfection is Twitter. So back when Jack Dorsey was starting Twitter as a side hustle, this idea of just posting your random thoughts was very bizarre to people. And he had to convince himself, like, how am I gonna perfect this art of tweeting and sharing thoughts and sharing pictures and all of these things that weren't really mainstream at the time. So what Dorsey did was that, rather than just trying to come up with the perfect product and see if he can wow every person that uses it, he just put up a simple site, right? Twitter, no E. Just sign up, very easy, very low barriers. And he just wanted to see if he could make any progress on getting users to use the product. He wanted to see if people were interested. He wanted to find a little bit of progress in growing Twitter from just a random website to what we now know um, as a dominant social media form. So rather than that you know, hyper fixation on perfecting the product, he just put it to the market and that allowed it, that really enabled it to grow. Principle three, really comes down to, to feedback being your best friend. Feedback is something that's really critical to, to growth, and these case studies kind of highlight the importance of getting feedback, and making sure that your product is garnering the attention that it deserves and filling the need that it should be filling. So going back to Twitter, the two most popular features on Twitter, um, really essential features that make the product what it is, is the ability to retweet a tweet. So somebody puts out a piece of content, and rather copying it word for word, you're allowed to share it on your own on your own profile, you can share it with your followers. It's kind of a way that this app really functions as a, as a social media site. And then one of the other key features of Twitter is the ability to tag another user, to have conversation, to be able to say, hey, I liked your, your post, or argue, or whatever you want to do on that platform, you're able to do through the app feature. When Jack Dorsey started Twitter, um, these features were not a part of the platform. It was really just, you could post your random thoughts, no one could really interact, and if someone wanted to share your content, They'd either try to take a screenshot or they would just copy it word for word, but they couldn't tag you, they couldn't give you credit. So users started to find ways to implement these features based off what they wanted to see. A lot of their feedback was, hey, we want to be able to share other people's content. So instead of being able to retweet a tweet, they would copy and paste the tweet and then put the two letters RT, saying like, I, I'm retweeting, I'm resharing your post. Dorsey got a lot of feedback that that's what his users wanted, and he implemented that feature, and that really helped the company and the platform grow, because now you're able to share content. It doesn't only have to be your original thoughts. And then finally, with the, the at symbol, a lot of users were like, we like the platform, we like sharing our thoughts, but there's no conversation here. There's really no network, there's no community. It's not a platform that, it's kind of like a notes app. So after users started using the at symbol, they started adopting it on their own. They would just at the user by name, first name. Dorsey got a lot of feedback through customer surveys that this is what users wanted to see. They wanted to be connected. They wanted to share content, but they also wanted to have conversations on this platform. So through those two pieces of customer feedback, 
Both of those features were implemented, they've been expanded on, and those are two of the most essential product features that lets Twitter have its 290 million monthly active users. And then a quick story um, on, the, on the topic of education. Saul Khan from Khan Academy originally did not plan on creating a you know, 100 million, 10 million global business of tutoring students in mathematics, but some of the most important feedback he got was when he started tutoring his little cousin on calculus, and his cousin was just lost, but the way that Sal Khan was teaching, he realized that it was making a difference with his cousin, but he was just happy to do it for free. He didn't think there was a business um, behind it. At a family dinner, more and more of his aunts and uncles were like, you gotta tutor our kid. What you're doing is great. My kid's not that great at math, but you teach it really well, and we'll start paying you. And that feedback was really small. It was really a conversation and could pass right by, but he took that feedback and built out Khan Academy, he started posting videos of him teaching math. He wanted to, back to the progress over perfection, he wanted to get a little progress. He wanted to see if people like his product. He built on passion, and now uh, Khan Academy helps many of us pa pass our math tests. Um, and he grew based off of that simple piece of feedback. And very quickly, the last principle um, I'll be talking about in growth is just the aspect of building community. One of my favorite examples of building community and the value of community when you're trying to grow an idea or a product comes from Craig Newark. When Craig Newark moved to San Francisco, he realized there were a lot of events that he was interested in going to, but his friends just didn't know about them. So what he did was he created Craig's email list. And what he would do is he'd email his friends all these events that were going on in San Fran and say, come join me with these, here are all the things going on. And his friends in that little pocket of community started sharing it with their other friends in San Francisco. They realized there's a really interesting value from this community that wanted to go out and see these events. They just had no way of finding them. So Craig Newark's list eventually became Craigslist and eventually started showing all of the topics and the events that were going on in the nearby city. And through that community and through the fact that people really liked the centralization, you got all of your different product features you had a lot of scale and expansion and a lot of growth that just came from the fact that what Craig's email list became was just about community and building that. So finally, just to, to recap on the principles of growth, number one is simply building on passion. Number two is focusing on progress over perfection. Number three is really making feedback your best friend. And number four is building community. And just to kind of wrap up my talk, though I gave all four of these principles in the context of building a business or building a startup, I think it's important to highlight that these principles of growth are transferable to our day-to-day -day lives. These are four principles that I try to follow whenever I'm coming up with an idea or just the day-to-day -day thinking about how I can grow every day, being passionate about what I'm working on, not getting too hyper fixated on being perfect, but progressing and growing every day, listening to feedback from the people in my community and network, and finding communities where I can thrive and continue to grow. So thank you all for your time. I really appreciate it.